Greetings everyone, this is Crime Alley Comics. Welcome to episode 47 of the Comic Book Artist Spotlight. Tonight's spotlight will be on Frank Cho. So let's get started. Frank Cho was born Duke Hyun Cho and he is a Korean American comic strip and comic book writer and illustrator known for his series Liberty Meadows as well as for books such as Shanna the She-Devil, Mighty Avengers and Hulk for Marvel Comics, and Jungle Girl for Dynamite Entertainment. Cho is noted for his figure drawing, precise lines, and depiction of well-endowed women. In his early life, he was the second of, third, uh, of three children. Cho was born near Seoul, Korea in 1971 but moved to the United States at the age of six, along with his brothers, Reno and Austin, and their parents, uh, Q Hayek Cho and Bok He Cho, who were in search of better e economic opportunities. So Cho was raised in Beltsville, Maryland. His parents had college degrees, but because they did not speak English well, they took whatever job they could find to support the family. With his mother working in a shoe factory and his father as a carpenter during the day and a janitor at, Grey, at a, a Greyhound bus station at night. Because money was scarce, Cho, who described his uh, latchkey childhood as rough, was relegated to finding his own extracurricular entertainment. When Cho was 10, his older brother Reno brought some comic books home and Cho started copying the art. When a friend saw that Cho was able to reproduce the artwork without tracing it, he urged Cho to illustrate comics for a living. From that point on, with the exception of some basic art classes, Cho refined his abilities by himself without any formal training. Finding influence in depression era comics such as Prince Valiant and Lil Abner and in the works of artists such as Norman Rockwell, N.C. Wyeth, Andrew Loomis, Al Williamson and Frank Frazetta. After graduating from High Point High School in 1990 he attended Prince George's Community College and was offered a scholarship to attend the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore, which he declined because he disliked the school's academic focus. As Cho's parents were not particularly supportive of Cho's interest in art, he placated them by transferring to the University of Maryland School of Nursing, which he says was his parents' idea. Cho would ultimately graduate with a B.S. in nursing in 1996. Cho wrote and drew a cartoon strip called Everything But the Kitchen Sink in the weekly Prince George's Community College newspaper, The Owl, where he was also comics editor. He then started drawing the Daily Strip University for the Diamondback, the student newspaper at the University of Maryland College Park. During his final year in college in 1994 or 1995, whichever it was, Cho received his first professional comic book assignment, doing short stories for Penthouse Comics with Al Gross and Mark Wheatley. Cho conceived of a six-part raunchy sci-fi fantasy romp called The Body, centering on an intergalactic female merchant Katie Winden, who can transfer her mind into any of her wardrobe bodies, empty mindless vessels that she occupies to best suit her negotiations with the local alien races that she encounters while traveling the galaxy trading and seeking riches. According to Cho, he was only hired for the art chores, but ended up writing much of the humor in the story. The story was never published due to various reasons stemming from Penthouse Comics' financial troubles. In 1999, Cho attracted controversy when 
while serving as one of the jurors for the third annual Ignitz Award, which are awards to small press creators and creator-owned projects published by larger publishers, he nominated his own book, Liberty Meadows. Writer Ed Brubaker, one of the original jurors and developers of the award, criticized that year's jury for their lack of support and acknowledgement of independent works and for allowing self-nomination. Brubaker also questioned whether the guidelines he and and Expo board member Chris Orr had developed for the for the awards were provided to that year's judges. The comic journal reacted to this by saying that this revealed some flaws in the Ignitz nomination system. Cho defended his decision by explaining that few of the submissions he received as a judge were deserving of no nomination and that the Ignitz uh, coordinator he consulted instructed him to use his own judgment as there were no rules against self-nomination. Cho eventually won two Ignit Awards that year for Outstanding Artist and Outstanding Comic and although he did not cast the winning vote he regrets his self-nomination as a mistake he would never again repeat. After graduation Cho adapted elements of this work for use in a professionally syndicated strip, Liberty Meadows. Cho signed a 15-year contract with Creator, uh, Creator Syndicate, which he later realized was unusually long and perhaps jokingly blamed on having a bad lawyer. <laughs> After five years of doing Liberty Meadows, Cho grew weary of the arguments with his editor over the censorship of the strip as well as the pressure of the daily deadlines and pulled the strip from syndication in December of 2001, though he continued to print, to, to print it uncensored in book form. During the course of his work on Liberty Meadows, he also did occasional cover work or anthology work for other publishers. These included Ultimate Spider-Man Super Special for Marvel Comics in 2000, The Savage Dragon number 100, The Amazing Spider-Man number 46 in 2002, Hellboy Weird Tales number 6 in 2003, and Invisible number 14 in 2004. He then began doing full interior work on other Spider-Man books for Marvel, including issue number 5 and 8, of Marvel Knights Spider-Man in 2004 and 2005 respectively and The Astonishing Spider-Man 123 also in 2005. Marvel Comics then senior editor Axel Alonzo who had been impressed by Liberty Meadows approached Cho about revamping the third string character Shanna the She-Devil, a scantily clad jungle lady who first appeared in the early 1970s as a college-educated defender of wildlife and opponent of firearms. Cho, seeing possibility, recast Shannon, or Shanna in a seven-issue 2005 miniseries as an Amazonian naif. Uh, the, the product of Nazi experiment with the power to kill dinosaurs with her bare hands but an unpredictable lack of morality. The miniseries was originally meant to feature uncensored nude drawings of the heroine, but Marvel later decided against this and had Cho censor his already completed pages for the first five issues. However, Cho has indicated on his website that Marvel planned to release a hardcover collection under its Max imprint, which will contain the uncensored artwork. Cho then penciled issues 14 and 15 of Marvel's New Avengers in 2006 and illustrated the first six issues of Marvel Comics 2007 relaunch of Mighty Avengers with writer Brian Bendis. He is the plotter and cover artist of Dynamite Entertainment's Jungle Girl. Cho drew issues seven through nine of Hulk, 
which were published in 2009, and in 2010 through 2011, Cho Illustrated writer Jeff Loeb's run on New Ultimates for Marvel Comics. In 2011, he worked on the miniseries X-Men Schism with writer Jason Aaron. In January of 2013, as an expansion of the Marvel Now initiative, Marvel premiered Savage Wolverine, a series written and illustrated by Cho that starred both Wolverine and co-starring Shanna the She-Devil and Amadeus Cho. The Lost World type story that comprises the first five issues is intended to evoke a classic adventure feel and is inspired by the Indiana Jones films and the pulp horror of H.P. Lovecraft's Thulu Mythos. In April 2015, Cho posted on his website an image he had drawn on a sketch cover of Spider Gwen of that character on all fours, with her rear end pointing upward, which mirrored a Spider Woman cover by Milo Manera that had caused a controversy the previous November. The Cho image drew criticism from Spider-Gwen writer Robbie Rodriguez, who while expressing appreciation of Manera's work, feared that such an image might drive away prospective female readers. Sam Maggs of the Mary Sue also criticized Cho because the character Spider-Gwen is a teenager. Other artists like J. Scott Campbell and Rob Liefeld defended Cho. Cho parodied the controversy by drawing the character Harley Quinn in the same uh, pose on a sketch cover of the, that character's series. In April the following year, Cho revisited the controversy by illustrating the character Cammy in the same type of pose on the cover of Udon Studios Street Fighter Legends No. 1. When asked if these controversies hurt his career, Cho replied that the, publici the publicity tripled the traffic on his website, increased attention given to him by convention organizers and convention attendees, and led to an increase in job offers. <laughs> in February of 2016, Marvel premieres Totally Awesome Hulk, a series written by Greg Pak and drawn by Cho, which sees teenager Amadeus Cho become the newest incarnation of the Hulk. Cho drew the first four issues of the series, his final page of which represented the end of his 14-year exclusive exclusivity contract with Marvel. He was then hired by DC Comics to draw variant covers of the first 24 issues of Wonder Woman as part of the company's Rebirth Initiative. However, Cho quit the project in July following the com uh, completion of the sixth issue cover due to the conflict with series writer Greg Ruka, who objected to the sexualized manner in which Wonder Woman was depicted in Cho's illustrations. As of May 2016, Cho was writing and drawing Skyborn for Boom Studios, a five-issue creator-owned miniseries that Cho describes as a cross between Highlander, Game of Death, and Cthulhu. The story focuses on a god trying to find the one weapon that can kill him, the mythical sword Excalibur, before it is found by others. At the time, Cho was also writing and drawing another creator-owned book, World of Pain, with his co-creator, Tom Snigowski, I think is how it's pronounced, for Flesk Publications. World of Pain stars Lockwood Payne, a psychic private investigator and modern-day sorcerer from an ancient society of witches and wizards who, with his urgent care expert friend Dr. Hurt and the beautiful witch in training Michelle find themselves embroiled in strange 
Misadventures in the World of the Occult. Cho describes the book part cross novel and part comic, and a cross between Sherlock Holmes, Harry Potter, or Sherlock Holmes and Harry Potter, with a dash of Hellblazer. <laughs> Skyborne number one was published September the seventh, while World of Pain is set to premiere in late 2016. So evidently, this information I'm giving you is four years old, but <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so I don't know if that ever came out I didn't look that up or anything but um, be worthy to check into that okay so let's talk about Cho's personal life Cho met his first wife Carrie Guthrie when they served together on a student resident council at the University of Maryland they were married in 1999 their first child Emily was born in 2001 followed by Samantha in 2004. They lived in Ellicott City, Maryland. Cho and Carrie separated in 2008 and divorced in 2009, after which Cho temporarily moved to a nearby apartment to be close to his two daughters. Cho later began dating Mara Rose, a film major who worked for him. Cho identifies as a lifelong liberal democrat and advocate for free speech and equal rights. Okay, so that's all I have as far as his personal life and so on. Now we'll get into the books that he's worked on. So we'll start with Ballpoint Beauties, Flask Publications, 2019, uh, author and artist. Oh, well, there is information from 2019, so <laughs> so I guess this is a little newer than I thought. Frank, Cho, Frank Cho's Savage Wolverine Artist Edition, IDW 2018, author and artist. Cave Paintings, The Art of Bud Root, Monkey Boy Press, 2016, and he was the publisher. Drawing Beautiful Women, The Frank Cho Method, Flesk Publications, 2014, author and artist. Women, Book 2, Selected Drawings and Illustrations, for Image Comics in 2013, author and artist. Liberty Meadows, Sunday's Book 1, Image Comics, 2012, author and artist. Apes and Babes, Volume 1. Not heard of any of these, but <laughs> uh, Image Comics 2009, author and artist. Mars Maiden Art Book, Brand Studios Press 2008, author and artist. Jungle Queen's Art Book, Brand Studio Press 2008, author and artist. Modern Masters Volume 14, Frank Cho, Tomorrow's Public Publishing, which we've talked about that place before. That was in 2007. Women, Selected Drawings and Illustrations, Image Comics 2006, author and artist. Liberty Meadows Book 4, Cold Cold Heart, by Image Comics 2005, author and artist. Liberty Meadows Book 3, Summer of Love, Image Comics 2004, author and artist. Liberty Meadows Book 2, uh, Creature Comforts, Image Comics 2003, author and artist. Liberty Meadows Book 1, Eden. Image Comics 2003, author and artist. And then Liberty Meadows Big Book of Love, Insight Studios 2001, author and artist. Frank Cho Illustrator, Insight Studios 2000, author and artist. University Squared, The Angry, uh, the Angry Years. Insight Studios Group, 1996, author and artist. Now for awards, 2017, the Ringo Award for Best Cover Art, 2011, the Emmy Award for the documentary Creating Frank Cho's World, 2011, the Daily Record Influential Mary, uh, Marylander Award for Communication, 2006, Haxter Award for Best Artist, 2006 
Haxter Award for Best in Show, 2001 National uh, Cartoonist Society's Award for Best Comic Book, 2001 National Cartoonist Society's Award for Best Book Illustration, The Eagle Award, doesn't say when, uh, Charles M. Schultz Award for Excellence in Cartooning, College Media Association for Cartoon for, for Cartooning Script College Media Association for Cartoonings Script Howard Award for Best College Cartoonist Max and M Moritz Medal for Best Internal I'm sorry Best International Comic Strip and then 1999 Ignitz Award for Outstanding Artist, uh, and that was for Liberty Meadows number one. Also a 1999 Ignitz Award for Outstanding Comic, and that was also for Liberty Meadows number one. And then those are the ones that he won, and then he got nominations in 2006 for the Haxter Award for Best Cover Artist, 2006 Haxter Award for Best Humor and 2006 Hacks, uh, Harvey Award for Best Artist. Uh, oh, there's a few more. Also nominated in 2006 for the Harvey Award for the Best Cartoonist, Harvey Award for Best Cover Artist, and the Eisner Award for Best Cover Artist. Okay, now, story and art. For DC Comics, he did Superman and Batman, World's Funnest, One Shot, among other artists, uh, and that was in 2000. Many Worlds of Tesla Strong, One Shot, among other artists, in 2003. And then for Marvel, Ultimate Spider-Man Special Number no. 1, 2002. Marvel Knights Spider-Man Number no. 5 and 8. Uh, he was the artist. That was 2004-2005. Shanna the She-Devil miniseries 1-7. through seven, Writer and artist. 2005. New Avengers number 14 and 15. He was the artist in 2006. Mighty Avengers number 1 through 6. Artist. 2007-2008. Hulk volume 3 number 7 through 9. King Size and, and King Size number 1. He was the artist. 2008-2009. New Ultimates miniseries 1 through 5. He was the artist 2010 and 11. X Men Schism miniseries number 2. Artist 2011. Avengers vs. X Men number 0. Artist 2012. Savage Wolverine number 1 through 5. Writer and artist 2013. The Totally Awesome Hulk number 1 through 4. Artist. 2015-2016. As for other publications, or other publishers rather, University, writer and artist, in the Diamondback University of Maryland, 1994-1995. Liberty Meadows, number 1 through 26, writer and artist, Insight Studios, 1999-2002. to Liberty Meadows, number 27 through 37, Writer and artist, Image Comics 2002 to 2006. Gray shirt, Indigo Sunset number three. Artist, and that was for America's Best Comics in 2001. More Fund Comics. Road to Home, graphic novel, writer and artist for Sky Dog Press in 2003. Zombie King number zero, writer and artist. Image Comics 2005, 50 Girls 50, number 1 through 4, Co-Writer and Designer, Image Comics 2011, Skyborn number 1 through 5, Writer and Artist for Boom Studios 2016 to 2018. Now for cover art, and I don't think they really cover as much cover art as he has done. Well, I don't know, there's quite, there's quite a bit on here. Anyway, we'll start out with Cavewoman Ju uh, Jungle Tales number one, and I guess that's for ba Basement Studios, 1998. Jingle Bells All Star Holiday Hullab Hullabaloo, 
Number one, for Ani Press two th in 2000. Hammer of the Gods, number one. Insight Studios, 2001. Blue Line Pro's Sketch, number 12. For Blue Line Pro in 2001. Code name Knockout, number one for Vertigo in 2001. Cave Woman Pangen C, number one for Basement Comics, 2001. Footman, number 15. Fairy Fire, number one. That's for Bald Guy Studios, 2002. Bald Guy Studios. Interesting. The Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 2, number 46 through 48. Of course, that's for Marvel Comics, 2002 and 2003. Opposite Forces, number 4. Funny Pages Press, in 2003. PVP, number 1 and 2. And number 16, Image Comics, 2003-2005. Trouble, number 1, for Marvel, 2003. Hellboy, Weird Tales number 6 for Dark Horse 2003, Invisible number 14, Image Comics 2004, Even More Fun Comics, Sky Dog Press 2004, Witchblade number 80 for Top Cow in 2004, Marvel Knights 4 number 13 for Marvel Comics 2005, Black Panther number 3, 8, and 18 for Marvel. 2005 2006 uncanny x-men number 461 for marvel 2005 nodwick number 13 for henchman comics or henchman publishing 2005 image holiday special for 2005 and that's image comics um uh, miss marvel number one through five marvel comics 2006 Red Sonia number 13 for Dynamite Comics 2006. Savage Red Sonia, Queen of the Frozen Wastes number 1 through 4, Dynamite Comics 2006. Fear Agent The Last Goodbye number 1, Dark Horse Comics 2007. Jungle Girl 0 through 5, Dynamite Comics or Dynamite Entertainment 2007 2008. Killing Girl number 1, Image Comics 2007. Ultimates, uh, Ultimates 3, number 3, Marvel 2008, Conan the Sumerian, number 1 through 9 for Dark Horse 2008-2009, Captain America number 41, Marvel Comics 2008, Secret Invasion number 6, Marvel Comics 2008, Jungle Girl Season 2, number 1 through 5, Dynamite 2008-2009, Fantastic Four, number 561 for Marvel Comics, 2009. Masquerade, number 1, Dynamite, 2009. Jennifer's Body for Boom Comics Studios, or for Boom Studios, rather, <laughs> 2009. The Astounding Wolfman, number 18, Image Comics, 2009. War Heroes, number 3, Image Comics, 2009. Uh, Dark Reign, The List... Avengers number one, uh, that's Marvel 2009, and then the same, uh, there's like eight of these, so uh, Dark Reign, The List, the first one's The Avengers number one, and then Daredevil number one, also in 2009, X-Men number one, Hulk number one, Punisher number one, Secret Warriors number one, and Wolverine number one. Oh, and The Amazing Spider-Man, number one. Uh, all of them were done in 2009 for Marvel Comics, except for The Amazing Spider-Man, number one, and that was done in 2010 for Marvel Comics. Hit Monkey, number one, Marvel, 2010. Hulk, number 21, Marvel Comics, 2010. The Incredible Hulk, number 608, for Marvel Comics, 2010. Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine, number one, Marvel, 2010. Ultimate Avengers vs. New Ultimates, number 1, 3, and 5, Marvel Comics 2011, 50 Girls 50, number 1 through 4, Image 2011, The Incredible Hulk, The Incredible Hulks, number 629, 
Marvel Comics 2011, The Amazing Spider-Man number 663 and 664, Marvel Comics 2011, Ultimate Spider-Man number 159, Marvel Comics 2011, uh, X-Men Schism number 1, 3, and 5 for Marvel Comics 2011. Wolverine and the X-Men number 1, Marvel 2011. Uncanny X-Men volume 2 number 1, Marvel 2011. Miracle Man number 2, Marvel 2015. Wonder Woman number 1 through 6, DC Comics um, in 2016. Trinity number two for DC Comics in 2016. Harley and her gang of Harleys number four through six. DC Comics 2016. Harley Quinn, Harley Loves Joker number one and two. DC Comics 2018. Harley Quinn number eight through 56 and 60 through 75. DC Comics 2017 through 2020. Wow, this is uh, up to date. <laughs> uh let's see Deja Thoris or Deja Thoris, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Number one, Dynamite Entertainment 2018, Amazing Spider-Man 799 and 800, Marvel Comics 2018, The Incredible Hulk number 717 for Marvel Comics 2018, Batman number 48, 50, and 71, DC Comics 2018-2019. Extermination number two for Marvel Comics 2018, Punisher number one for Marvel Comics 2018, Venom number seven Marvel 2018, War of the Realms number one Marvel Comics 2019, Red Sonja number one, Dynamite Entertainment 2019, Vampirella number one, Dynamite Entertainment 2019, and Black Cat number three, Marvel. 2019 all right so that's everything I have on Frank Cho um, then I have a few books to show you I actually have um, I think I have several more books that Frank Cho has done okay so now I'll show you the few Frank Cho covers that I've pulled out of my own collection most of which are Harley Quinn books <laughs> so let me get over here first one up is Harley Quinn Harley loves Joker you can see Frank Cho's signature right there very cool book One. Oh, that was number that was number two number two this is Harley Quinn number 46 Harley Quinn number 48 Cho's signature at the bottom there. Harley Quinn number 50. Kind of an homage to the Batman 66 TV series movie where Batman's trying to get rid of a bomb. <laughs> Harley Quinn number 56 and Batman number 48 all right So that's all I have for Frank Cho. I hope you all enjoyed this video. 
If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you can be notified when I put up new videos. Uh, it's all free. <laughs> so please subscribe. Uh, as I said before, if you have any comments or any insight into Frank Cho that I haven't covered, any personal experiences meeting him or anything like that, I would appreciate your feedback in the comment section below. And with that, I will let you all go. Have a fantastic remainder of the week. Uh, it's extremely hot here in Indiana mid 90s humidity sucks <laughs> we had a little pop-up rain shower a while ago and that's the first rain we've got in probably a couple of weeks of any significance so <laughs> anyway everybody have a great week god bless and we will see you all next video